Hello and welcome. Today we're going to present a video using the Trimble X7 scanner in an inverted workflow and registering that data to SX10 scans in Trimble Business Center. The primary focus of this video will be to show the X7 inverted field method. We'll cover in brief detail the SX10 scanning. We'll then return to the office, import our SX10 data into TBC and register the X7 data onto that. We won't be going through in any great detail point cloud management in TBC or SX10 workflows as they are sufficiently covered in other videos. Important to note, it's important to note there are alternative workflows available to achieve our inverted scanning goals. Today we'll just be showing one that we found quite suitable. Some of the following procedures are clearly sped up, but hopefully still give a good understanding of what's actually involved. Note that we set up our scanner off hole and then moved it over, this being quite easy. Uh, at this point we're connected to Trimble Perspective and we'll begin scanning shortly from the inverted position as Perspective handles this just fine. We've started a scan and the X7 is now performing its self-calibration. Note on our tripod setup that a good portion of our dome essentially is obscured by the legs of the tripod. Uh, we found that we still had significant success registering to our other scan data, but we need to be considerate of that in our setup. Our first scan is finished and the data imported to perspective. And we're just gonna have a little bit of a look and we'll note that it's uh, automatically righted the data. So we are not viewing it inverted, we're viewing it as we were standing. Note that the narrowness of the neck or entry to the below ground feature will help determine the number of scan positions that we need to use, bearing in mind the 600 millimeter minimum range of the X7. Here we're conducting our second scan and fast forward to importing into perspective now you'll note the automatic registration was not successful and we're needing to use the manual assistance. So I prefer the two point pick view for this. And we'll see that this was successful. Uh, note I probably could and should have changed my automatic register options on the bottom of the screen to register to none, knowing that the registrations were not likely to be successful on an automatic basis. This would then prompt me to do it manually. Here, just inspecting the data again, just to make sure it's logically correct. And shortly we'll fast forward again to the third and fourth scans being completed in much the same fashion. In the previous manual registration I showed, we used some pretty discreet features like uh, the steps rung ladder, not always available to us in a below ground environment. So now I'll show use of uh, what looks like a bit of concrete decay, things like that. Uh, in concert with our color coded intensities and different views available, we should have some success finding a feature uh, or if we need to, we might introduce something artificially, uh, drop some paint markers in or something like that. Because it's conducting its own cloud to cloud, we don't need to be exact. 
we just need to give it a helping hand. After the fourth station, we were satisfied that we'd captured all the data we needed. Uh, I then conducted a refinement in perspective, which we'll show uh, a little bit later on, just to make sure I was comfortable with the data before we remove the instrument. Now a highly sped up capture of our access workflow for the SX-10, uh, scanning above ground in the same location. Uh, for more detail, you could use the YouTube playback speed and slow this one down a little, but mainly giving the understanding that we captured a scan next to our elevating tripod, and we were going to use this data, which could be georeferenced correctly on a coordinate system, and we'll register the X7 data to that. Back in the office now, and I've imported the SX10 job into TBC and tick colorized on, and just show you a little bit of the understanding of what the site looked like there. Now dragging and dropping in the TDX file from the X7, already colorized in perspective on export, so I don't need that option. While we import this, I'll show the registration report that was created in the field, which usually we want to interrogate before we leave. Here showing pretty good results. That import's finishing up, and we will see that the X7 data is in a different position, as it's not on a coordinate system. TBC again handling our coordinate system grid ground scaling as need be. Now we're going to use the register function from the point clouds module to transform the X7 data into the correct position. And we're able to use uh, the pairwise manual approach if we wish, but here, just using the auto register. We can see that our SX10 data is selected as the reference and the group of already registered X7 stations are moving to that. Reasonable result from the automatic, running the optimize now and getting a result that we're quite happy with. Now our data is all registered together, just having a bit of a look, starting to get an appreciation of the below ground feature. Uh, here, this is a stormwater channel. 
using the limit box to view that a bit more easily, filter out some of those trees. And we could be getting ready to bring in more X7 data uh, for the next manhole down. We hope you enjoyed this video and please see our contact details there if you have any questions or feedback.